Good afternoon, everyone. A news story out. Dr. David Evans from Perth, Australia. Earth's climate sensitivity to carbon dioxide is much lower than originally thought. Actually, it's 10 times lower, so the IPCC has overstated any claims of warming by minimum 10 times. And right on the heels of that, another article about volatile organic compounds, isoprene. This is acting as a natural coolant on our planet. And what the IPCC and Sierra Club so quickly forget to tell us is that the Pacific Decadal and Atlantic Multidecadal oscillations mirror temperature on our planet. The oceans drive our temperatures. As well, total solar irradiance driving our temperatures. Oh, by the way, there's been no global warming for 18 years and 8 months. So let's take a look at how all these parts weave together and show a cooling trend starting right now. The article in reference here, Perth Electrical Engineers Discovery Will Change Climate Change Debate. It comes out swinging right in your face with new mathematical models. Dr. David Evans clearly states that the IPCC has overestimated global warming by as much as 10 times and that the Earth's climate sensitivity to carbon dioxide is much, much lower than we thought. And then the article goes on to state that it's about a fifth or a tenth of what the IPCC says. So when we start to take a look at some of these forward projections overlaid with the baseline of what's really occurring on the ground right now, the observed temperatures, you can see clearly that they're in that range, 1.77C compared to 0.26. That's a little over five times. And this is from 2006 forward. The observed is one hundredth of a degree, but the projected is 170 times higher than the observed. The newest temperatures coming out from RSS show no global warming this month either. And if you want to take a little bit further look back into time with had CRU and the GISS global temperature mean models, here you go. Still no warming. Those temperatures are lower than what they were in 1998. Let's take a little further back. 1970 going forward. Look at around 1995. It just ceased warming. It's actually cooling. Land surface temperatures showing the same anomalies. It doesn't matter where the temperature data is coming from. Land-based stations or satellite, they're all showing the same trends. Now let's jump into total solar irradiance. I pulled this up. This is China-specific. The globe follows the same pattern, but I thought you might like this China-wide surface air temperature anomaly overlaid with the TSI. Nice correlation there. And if we go on a global scale here, University of California, Berkeley, Earth Surface Temperature Project shows the exact same anomaly. And it just so happens, temperatures dropping, but our sunspot count is decreasing and we are going into a new solar minimum in addition to the regular solar cycle. Isn't that crazy how those two match up? And they keep telling us it's CO2. Now taking a look at the correlation between CO2 and temperatures, let's go back to 1900 and go forward. Oops! How did the temperature rise in 1920 when there was no CO2 rise at that time? Hmm. Figure that one out. Oh yeah, it wasn't there a, a a solar maximum during that time, huh? No, forget it. Move on. It's CO2. Now, one of the most interesting data sets here from GISS. Notice from 2001, CO2 continues to increase, yet our Earth's temperature decreases. Bam! Right there. Broken model. Add on top of this, new research about volatile organic compounds. Originally, they thought that these were organism-based isoprene releases from biological sources only, yet just yesterday they found out that sunlight striking the surface of the ocean, the film on top of the ocean can release the same VOCs. This triggers cooling. I mean, we look back literally 2,000 years in time, notice in the green bars from the oxygen-18 isotope showing how 
temperatures warmed significantly quickly in natural cycles again and again and again from the Minoan warm period the Roman warm period the medieval warm period and our leveled period now funny how they never mention these three previous warm periods I don't think the Romans were driving SUVs or flying airplanes the Minoans I know for sure were not flying airplanes and when we get right back into it the major driver on our planet number two in the back seat behind the Sun would definitely be our oceans so when we take a look at the Pacific decadal and Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation actually they drive temperature and temperature tracks what the oceans do but this is never mentioned either now when we start to take a look and break it into parts back to 1850 you know there's a variable cycle it's cool it's warm it's cool it's warm but every time it goes warm the temperature on the planet rises and inversely it cools and you know what the data is showing at least on the AMO as well as the PDO and once both of these oceans turn cool specifically triggered by La Nina in the Pacific our entire planet's going to cool rapidly 2017 2018 take a look at the cycles that's occurred before it's going to occur again this is just a cycle thanks for watching hope you got something out of the video please remember to subscribe to my channel adapt 2030 and pass this information on so we can all be more well informed about the true drivers of climate on our earth